Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and today we have Drain the Titanic from uh, National Geographic. This is a 44 minute long episode. Uh, the, there's many Drain the uh, episodes on National Geographic, and this is from 2015. It uh, obviously, uh, what is, well, if you haven't heard, seen any of my other videos or if you haven't watched any of the Drain things, basically what they do is they don't actually drain oceans, of course. Uh, but they do it uh, a, a simulation of what it be what it would be like to drain the Bermuda Triangle or the Atlantic Ocean or any number of different areas around the world which obscure our view of what's underneath the dark deep waters uh, all over our planet uh, and this is one of the obviously one of the most famous sites in the entire world uh, because of the humongous tragedy that happened in 1912. Uh, for some of you who may be too young to remember uh, such a thing, uh, I am, because I wasn't alive. I'm not that old. Uh, but uh, some of you might remember the movie from 1997. So, there, from James Cameron. Surprisingly, there's no James Cameron in this whatsoever. There are two other Titanic documentaries on here, and at least one of them is uh, 20 years after the movie. Um, Titanic uh, was from 19 from uh, yeah, it's from 2017 so uh, yeah James Cameron is all about that Jay if you don't know uh, James Cameron is the guy who directed um, Titanic and Avatar and Terminator and all these you know all the Terminator 2 Terminator, yeah um, he's big movie guy and he is in love with the Titanic however this is not one of his projects this is a National Geographic thing, and as they, there's other people apparently looking after uh, the, the Titanic and searching it and mapping it digitally. Uh, that's what they do. The, the, the people that are in charge of this, the uh, RS, RMS Titanic Incorporated, uh, is a, a group that uh, works to protect and conserve and, and uh, research the wreck, the, the wreckage and the history related to it, uh, along with a numbers, number of different teams using the latest technology to map the ocean floor, they are, for the first time, uh, getting to see what the Titanic looks like at the bottom of the ocean. And uh, they tr through that, they explore um, how the accident might ha have happened, because there's tons of theories, but again, it's mostly just eyewitness accounts from people who are who are still alive, or at least were still alive. There's not, if there's any left, there, it's not many. Um, there are uh, or ancestors of, of the people who, who died in the uh, in the accident. Uh, it, cr it crashed into an iceberg, from what we hear. So uh, one of the things that they do examine is how big of, uh, how much of contact with the iceberg did it have and there's legends that it said there was a 300 long gash along the side of the ship, along the starboard side of the ship. And uh, they researched that, and now that they're able to sort of digitally take away all the water uh, through all the scanning and everything else, they've discovered there ain't no 300 long foot gash. So what did take down the Titanic and all the water that poured in and how big, if there if there was a gash, I'm not going to tell you if there was. If there was a gash, how big was it? And uh, and they also they also use uh, their research to determine when the ship broke apart. There's if you've seen the uh, 1997 film Titanic, uh, one of the most dramatic sequences as the ship is sinking is when the stern comes out of the water and then just snaps. The, right in the middle of the ship just snaps. It's a humongous, dramatic moment. Everybody's in danger. Just, it's, it's beautifully shot and it's terrifying because this is a retelling of something, some things that actually happened. Well, there's some research in here that says it may not have happened exactly that way. I'm interested to see what uh, James Cameron's documentary says as well down the line, uh, whenever that gets picked. But uh, yeah, in this case, did it break apart above the water or below? Because what they found is the stern 
and the bow, the two different halves of the ships, it, it, the ship, it certainly did break apart, but and the pieces are more than 2,000, 2,000 feet apart, or yards, 2,000 feet apart. It's it's a pretty decent distance. It's, it's a lot of football fields. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so what happened? Uh, along with this, they examine um, the different treasures, uh, the artifacts, the things that belong to people, uh, pieces of the ship that people have uh, brought up. Uh, they're very careful about not disturbing a lot of the wreckage, because technically, to many, it's it's a grave site. It's it's a point where so many people died. Um, so it's 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 a matter of uh, you know being respectful of the, of the area. I mean, you, if you look at some of the footage they show of the cameras moving around down there, you see teacups or dinner plates, and um, they've brought up jewelry and uh, hats and watches, the stopwatches and everything else, It's you know, or a gold watch. Um, there's all sorts of things. And there's museum exhibits and things like that that show off these things that, that, that exist all over the world. Um, where you can see these these artifacts, and uh, but it's 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 one thing to say, hey, let's let's examine this and show this for history and for posterity. It's another to be a, a grave robber and just take everything from it. Um, so they're kind of they're kind of careful about that. But it's a lot of the pieces they have brought up, they tell a story and they've been able to match them with the people. Uh, that they belong to, uh, whether they were high society or from the lower decks, uh, it's it's there's a story in each one of them, and it's it's kind of they even found a notebook from a guy who had just graduated like high school or college or whatever, and he's learning how to in one of the pages he's learning how to sign his name in a in a, in a fancy way it, repeatedly over and over again. Uh, he's trying to make his way in America. That's what he was hoping to do. But he was, yeah, he was like 17. He just finished school in South Africa and uh, made his way up to England. Got the Titanic for his trip to America, and it did not turn out well for him. So, yeah, there's so many stories to be told. Uh, more than the big bombastic blockbuster that Titanic was. It used to be the biggest movie of all time, biggest money-making movie of all time for a very long time. Um, but, yeah, this is this is more about... The nature of the wreck, what was left behind, what is deteriorating. Uh, there's also biologists and uh, scientists that are looking at why the ship itself, this big, sturdy, unsinkable ship, is quickly de deteriorating faster than they ever imagined. And uh, you'll get to hear from them if you watch this and determine that you'll realize that this ship isn't going to be around for much longer. So. There's that struggle. Do we try to salvage what we can before it's all gone? Or uh, do we just let it fade away? And those are this, the decisions that have to be made. So there's lots of mysteries in this, lots of things to be solved, and it's pretty interesting. Uh, again, because it, rather than, you know, as compared to like, hey, here's a bunch of pirate ships underneath the ocean, or here's some other random stuff that you don't, you can't put a name or a face to. Uh, there's so many people uh, that died in this, and of course had a blockbuster movie associated with it, but there's so many people that died um, in, in relation to where it was coming from and to where it was going. It was a humongous national tragedy, even though some people don't know that it was even real. Uh, they think it was just a movie. So I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's worthwhile giving it a shot. If you're ever interested in a little bit of history and the science behind recovering that history, especially from a pretty much an alien world. It's like pulling uh, back data from the moon uh, and seeing if there's, oh, there was a, a crashed ship on the moon. That's almost the equivalent of what they're doing here on a regular basis. So, yeah, if you get a chance, I'd, I highly recommend uh, checking these uh, Drain, uh, Drain the series, uh, but the Titanic one especially is really interesting if you're into the history of those kind of things. By the way, um, here in LA, especially particularly in Long Beach, there's a ship called the Queen Mary. And if you ever want to get an idea of what it was like to be on the Titanic, well, 
Queen Mary is even bigger than the Titanic. The Titanic was maybe about 883 feet long. Uh, Queen Mary is over 1,000 feet long. It's a massive ship. It's beautiful. It's permanently docked in Long Beach. So if you ever get a chance to get out of your house again safely and you ever come to Long Beach, check out the Queen Mary and you might uh, discover some, some pretty amazing things. You might want to go to the bow and yell, I'm king of the world. Too many people have done that. But you can do it too if you want. It's not the same thing as the Titanic, but it's pretty darn close. For a layman. I'm sure all the boat experts are like, no, you don't know what you're talking about. That's stupid. It's nothing like the Titanic. It's a different thing. Yeah, I know. I'm, I don't know everything. But as a normal person, don't know about ships. It was interesting to experience. I've been on that ship many times. All right, let's pick tomorrow's episode. 332. 332. 332. Hmm, okay. Well, we get another documentary. I don't know if it's a series or a single thing, but we're going to learn a little bit about Mars and Beyond. Mars and Beyond. Looks like we're starting to run a documentaries again. All right. Mars and Beyond, probably from National Geographic, again, because that's where all the fun documentaries come from. Mars and Beyond on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow.